Neil Russell, are you with us? Yeah, I want to just add today, at sundown, begins yeah. Passover. Thank you, that's right. That's and a- in the wee hours of tomorrow morning, Carl, occurs the third of the four blood moons that's of right. the 2014-2015 blood moon, uh, moon tetrad discovered by my friend, yeah. Pastor Mark Bilt. Yeah, yeah. Which, as, as everybody, or maybe not everybody knows this, but they occur on Jewish feast day. That's okay? right. On tabernacles that's and right. also Passover, which is tomorrow. Yeah, okay? five. Yeah, four in a row that started last year on Passover and Tabernacles, and then this year, Passover, which we're getting ready to come into, and then Tabernacles of this year in the fall, and then that's it for a long, long time. I mean, these things only happened seven or eight, nine times in the last 2,000 years. This tet- yeah. Let me this just tet- add one more thing. Yeah. Okay, Pastor Mark Biltz, yeah. who discovered, uh, going to a NASA website, yes. the uh, Tetrad of Moons, uh, also wrote the foreword to my book, Newton's Riddle. Yeah. And Carl... Our mutual friend, and I talked to him last week, Dr. Gavin Finley, yeah, yeah. who, in my opinion, has the best end time website, which is called the End, end time, time Pilgrim. Pilgrim. That's right. Calls these prophetic signs omens. Yeah. Now, guys, this is what an omen is. It's a final warning. It, it, a final <laughs> warning before God's judgment. Thank you. And I really believe this with every fiber of my being, guys. That God sent Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, on a mission to speak before the United States Congress yeah. a, a month ago, yeah. warning America not only, you know, not to allow Iran to continue its nuclear program, okay, which was aimed specifically at wiping Israel off the face of the map. I believe in my heart that Benjamin Netanyahu won back his office against all odds. I'm going to say that again, against all odds. Yeah. Because if you looked at the news before, it says he's only going to have 22 seats, and he ended up with 30 seats. He yeah. ended up... The reason he dissolved the, the Knesset is he, he, was, he couldn't get anything done. Well, right now, he has a Knesset of people that are supporting him in Israel right. okay, against all odds. And he had why? The... And here's the reason why. God supernaturally gave him favor because he's going to be needing this to God and Israel through all the horrendous events that are ready to befall Israel. Right. And that's all in Newton's riddle, Carl. Yeah. I know, I know. It's it's all there. Now, you wrote it as historical fiction, but it's based upon tons of fact right. as well as understanding of prophecies that are to come. And, of course, you you know, you know took some liberties and kind of fictionalized how all of that might unfold, but, but it's amazing because it's one of those— <laughs> I'm, I'm using air quotes, uh, Neil. It's one of those fiction books that is is unfolding before our eyes as as fact. A lot of it is. Well, Carl, I mean, you're you're an author, and you know, before you start to sit down and write, you're compelled. I mean, it's something that people that have never done this before really don't understand. But when God compels us, and I have a verse, and this is what I want to read to you right now. Okay. It's Second Peter chapter 1, verses uh, 20 through 21. It says, it reads like this, and these are words of caution. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will. Right. But men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And, Carl, when you wrote your book, and when Jonathan Kahn wrote his book, and when Mark Biltz wrote his book, and when I wrote this book, I was compelled. And even though the book is a little different because it is fiction, but it's based upon fact, and I wrote this in 2006, not thinking 2015 would be here so quickly. Right. But it's here. It is. And all these events, I mean, we're just sitting back, all people, whether they're Christians or not, and they're being wowed every day. Uh, because of all these things happening in the news. Oh, and yeah. I will tell you guys, it's in Newton's Riddle. It's in Newton's Riddle. Newton's Riddle, it's, yes, it's, it, the characters in there are, uh, some of them are fictional. I made those up. In fact, Ezra, who is my main character, is me. Mm-hmm. And so, guys, but this is what's happening right now, and it's a warning. No other book other than Frank Peretti's This Present Darkness right. exposes, and I want everyone to hear this because... You know, we blame the Democrats, you know, Democrats blame Republicans and so on. Guys, we have to stop the blaming game and blame the source of what's going on, and it's Satan. Our battle and is Satan, not against flesh and, and blood. not being preached right. in churches, Carl. Satan has planned this out to the T. Right. And when we were listening to the news and you hear these politicians, you hear that stuff yesterday, you know what? You have to really need the discernment of the Holy Spirit to know truth from fiction, Carl, and I know you right. know that, Okay. Right. 
Well, Newton's riddle exposes all that, guys. It exposes. And I'm a teacher, so again, I'm going to say this several times while we go through this because I'm going to be quiet. It's newtonsriddle.com. All money, all royalty goes to causes that support returning Jews back to Israel. And I'm 100% Jewish. My real name is Neil Greenspan, and I plan on going back. In fact, I asked the Lord, can I be one of the 144,000 that stay? Because I really want to stay. I think it's fun. (laughs) I love living in these end times, and I really, really, really believe with all my heart, Carl, that God has given you the insight, because your book is moving up in the charts, as you said. Uh, My book is moving up in the charts. It's God that does that. We don't open the doors. God does. And God opened the door for me to be with you right now. So I'm going to be quiet, and you can ask the next question. Oh, yeah. Well, no, listen, you don't have to be quiet. I've got plenty of questions, but, I mean, (laughs) this is your time slot, Neil, and we want people to know. Folks, listen, this is Neil Russell. He is the author of the runaway bestseller Newton's Riddle. You can get it at Amazon and all all over the place. Uh, But go to the website, newtonsriddle.com, newtonsriddle.com. That's N-E-W-T-O-N-S, Newton, as and Isaac Newton, newtonsriddle.com. And uh, there you can find out about Neil and the book. Go to amazon.com and order it yeah. and uh, and read it and share it. As many others, Newt Gingrich has read it. Sid Roth of It's Supernatural has read it. Matter of fact, it's been featured on Sid Roth and It's Supernatural. Uh, David Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh's brother and, and the uh, commentator David Limbaugh, he has read it. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a powerful book being read by uh, movers and shakers and powerful people. It's impacting people around the world. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to get you to tell us more about it. In fact, we've got just a, just a couple minutes before we go to our first break, and then after that we'll have a much longer segment. But just give folks that are not familiar with it just an overarching uh, description of the book. What's it about? We've okay. been, t- we've well, been saying it's historical fiction, but yeah, tell them what it's I'll about. I'll add two more people who are re- really reading the book, Billy Graham and his son. Okay. Good, Billy Those and Franklin Graham. This in a lot of people's hands. Yeah. Uh, As I said the last time I was on your show, Isaac Newton, who I teach in science, was a Bible scholar. Mm -hmm. In the last 30 years of his life, he truly felt that God wanted him to find out when Christ is going to return to earth. And just like we're trying to find out, he had the Holy Spirit. It's only God that reveals. But he looked at Daniel chapter 9, verse 25, Mm -hmm. and he looked at it differently than all of us do. Okay, instead of adding up those numbers, you know, the 49 and 62 weeks, What he did is he said that there's no reason to add those numbers. And in doing so, he said, did violation to Daniel. He said that the two numbers are separate. And they talk about the first coming of Christ and the second coming of Christ. And being counted from the going forth of the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. See, guys, I want you to hear this. The, The restoring and rebuilding of Jerusalem is what happened in 1967. Thank you. Israel yeah. became a nation in 48, but guys, that 49 years added on, this is what Newton said, to 1967, after the Six-Day War, brings us to now. That's why the book came out now, because right now we're living through all these events. And guys, we're headed toward Daniel's 70th week. I mean, throughout time, people have waited and tried to understand, when does this occur? Well, Again, Newton didn't really know until, you know, you add up those numbers, it's now. It's now, and all these events that you're seeing on the news, everything that's happening is now. Yeah, yeah. Neil, obviously, I mean, we are living in prophetic times, and on the other side of the break, we can talk more about that, and then uh, just, uh, you know, how, how relevant Newton's riddle is and some of the content of it. I mean, you've got, a, you've got an African-American U.S. president as, as a character, and, and, and a lot of other uh, uh, mirrors of today's world, so we're going to talk about all of that Absolutely. in a moment. Thank yeah, you. Folks, listen, we're going to take a quick time out, and I want to make this very quick, because we're we're going to come back with more of Neil Russell and Newton's Riddle. You're listening to Freedom Friday live. And uh, Neil, we, we left off with you talking about uh, uh, it's, uh, it's historical fiction. It's a novel, but it's based on fact. It's based on historical fact, geopolitical fact, uh, biblical fact, and it's proving to be extremely prophetic. And you deal with the facts around Isaac Newton and his search for the end of time or the end or the return of the Lord. And uh, but you also said that it's very important that we as Christians and believers, and, and your book does this, we, that we expose Satan and his plan, his game plan in these last days. So t- talk a little bit more about that. That's where you left off. Okay, guys, I want you to hear this. I didn't believe this. Um, I went to church my entire life. I read the Bible. I read that, but it's not until your faith is tested, and mine was not tested. And here's the thing. It says in the Bible that a Jew needs a sign. Well, guys, I had it. I saw a demon. I actually saw a demon. 
I have a reference point. Okay, it's not watching Harry Potter, those things. I know right. they're real, and I know what's in this book is absolutely real. Carl, Satan has a plan. It's never taught in church. No one hears about this, but Satan has a strategized with his demonic princes that are all around the world to subtly, subtly, it's happened over a period of time. We don't even know it. It's like the frog in the frying pan to destroy America. Right. And now America, why America? Well, first of all, we are Israel's sole protectorate, okay? And then when is, America's gone, then Israel. And that is the plan. Now, guys, here's what's happened. I mean, I don't have to go back in time. Look at what's happened. Every Turn on the news. Who would have thought these things are occurring in America today? See, Satan knows the Bible better than anyone. He knows his eventual fate is in the lake of fire. And he also knows that Jesus' promise is to return to place his feet on the Mount of Olives. Simply put, if there are no Jews left in Israel in the future, now just think how simple this is, Carl. And Satan is doing everything in his power to make sure that happens. Jesus can't return. Right. He's tried to do it throughout time. And we can go back in history, starting with Esther going to the Holocaust, and right now, all those missiles and Hezbollah, this is all in Newton's riddle. See, guys, Newton's riddle starts, okay, with Newton coming up with the plan of when Jesus is going to return. It ends with Daniel's 70th week with the peace treaty signed, and that starts the time, the tick-tock time, the last seven years on earth. No other book that's ever been written shows Satan's plan to destroy the protectorate of America and also Israel. Now, it's not going to happen, but guys, we have to open up our eyes to the spiritual reality that this is happening, and Newton's Riddle does it. And see, in Chapter 9 of Newton's Riddle, I call it the Academy Awards from Hell, where the demonic princes are given awards, just like you watch people in Hollywood give themselves an award for the subtle schemes that they've done over the past 50 years, how they've desensitized us to sexual sins, how they destroyed the families, because I'm a teacher, and it breaks my heart to see divorce and what's happening to these children out there. And see, it's, it's, the whole book is done in two levels, and it's unbelievable because it's only God. I don't have the ability to do it. He says that, I want you to hear this, everybody. In Psalm 91, verse 3, okay, it tells us that God will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Now, Newton's riddle explicitly shows us how each person, all of us, have been assigned from birth demons called familiar spirits. And these demons study us, and they exploit our individual weaknesses. And, Carl, I have individual weaknesses, and you do, and everybody out there does. And here's why. It eventually leads to death, destruction, and total separation from God when they die. Now, Newton's riddle exposes that on an individual level, but it also exposes it of what's happening right now to our president, to our Congress, to this country, and what's happening to Israel. And ISIS and uh, all those things that you read about in the news, okay, the terrorism that's going on in the Gaza Strip, uh, Iran putting missiles, I mean, these are accurate missiles now, in the hands of Hezbollah, which is in uh, uh, right above Israel and Lebanon. See, but one thing I want all of you to know, okay, there are angels. You've been assigned. If you're a, a Christian and you're going to heaven, you've been assigned from the birth, because God knows from beginning to end, an angel that watches over you. And Israel is protected by Michael, and you'll see this in the book, and the angelic host, and that's the safest place to be, because I'm going there one day, and I'm going to live there. Yeah. So, again, Newton's Riddle Yes, there are end-time books out there, but I don't think there's any out there that shows this in the two dimensions that it's written, and it's only from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I didn't do it, Carl. Yeah. I did it, not do no, it. I understand. If you if you write from the spiritual dimension, you, you can't do that in the flesh. And that is what is interesting about your book and, and fascinating. As you said, you, you compared it to this present darkness. I read all of those books in that series, great series, and so your book is very similar. But in your book, you actually have an Afro-American president of the United States. You have in there basically everything that's going on in the Middle East now, very Absolutely. prophetic. You have you, you talk about the economy of the United States and what's going on with that, and yeah. now now our current economy and what's happening around the world is mirroring what's in your book. And and so, I mean, it, it's proving to be very prophetic. Well, Carl, I want to add one more thing. The book is based upon one major verse, okay, that I, I, I want all your listeners to get into their heads if they haven't known. It's called Genesis 12.3. 
God admonishes all nations throughout time that I will bless those who bless the descendants of Abraham, right. the Jewish people, and I will curse those who curse them. Now, this came from all the way back in Genesis. America, since its foundation, has opened its arms to the Jews. Yeah. Okay? And see, that's the thing. Once that ends, and that's where the devil's going with this, okay? And we see this so much in the news right yep. now. Yep. And that battle that's going on, okay, we can't do that. In the Newton's Riddle, when this peace treaty that's coming up, okay, and the peace treaty that we just heard, you know, that uh, Iran says, oh, yeah, we're going to roll over and we're going to not make nuclear bombs, okay? And the world's saying, yay, that's a lie from hell, okay? So, again, guys... Newton's Riddle is the only book out there, and Carl wrote great books. Everybody's writing. These are, these are the end times, and this is the time that God's watchmen are out there proclaiming, guys, this is the, we're getting close, we're getting close, we're getting close. But, Carl, last time I was on the show, I barely got this out. I want to say this again. Okay? Say it. You've got 10 seconds. Okay. How long? 10 seconds. Oh, I want to say that what an honor it is to be on this show and read Newton's Riddle because, again, there's events in the book that I haven't said that are going to happen, okay? And again, I am so honored to be on your show, Carl. Thank you, Neil. It's such a pleasure. 